I would like to begin by acknowledging the land on which I stand to teach this class is in the traditional territory of the Cherokee, Shawnee, and Yuchi peoples. This map from 1762 depicts the Cherokee capital city of Chota and the neighboring village of Tanasi, 200 miles to our east, after which the river and later the state of Tennessee was named. Chota was estimated on this map to supply 175 fighters to battle against the British colonists who coveted their land. Chota was near present-day Knoxville. I ask you to remember these towns' destruction in December 1780. That year, quote, Virginia Governor Thomas Jefferson sent an expedition of 700 Virginians and North Carolinians against the Cherokee under the command of John Sevier. They won the Battle of Boyd's Creek on December 16th and proceeded to burn 17 Indian towns, including Chota, Chilhawi, the original Sitico, Teleco, Great Hiwassi, and Chastowi by New Year's Day, 1781, which is to say they spent their Christmas holidays burning the homes of Cherokee people. Cherokees ceded Kentucky and the Cumberland River Valley land in March 1775 as part of the quote-unquote Transylvania Purchase at Sycamore Shoals on the Watauga River, but the Shawnees were not party to any such session. Shawnees and dissident Cherokees raided settlements in the valley in the early 1790s, leading to the death of Shawnee military chief Chicksica at Bledsoe Station near Nashville. His younger brother, Tecumseh, went on to lead a major Indian confederacy in the Great Lakes region. The Cherokee, previously restricted to lands in eastern Tennessee and northwest Georgia, faced all-out expulsion from territory east of the Mississippi River in the late 1830s. The Treaty of New Echota on December 19, 1835, granted Cherokee Indians two years to move to Indian Territory, what's modern Oklahoma. Only a fraction of Cherokees left voluntarily. The United States government, with its assistance from state militias, forced most of the remaining Cherokees west in 1838. The northernmost route ran northwest through Murfreesboro and Nashville. Collectively, these expulsion marches, known as the Trail of Tears, caused the deaths of around one quarter of the Chickasaw, Choctaw, Creek, Seminole, and Cherokee peoples and Afro-descendant slaves forced to endure them. I ask you to remember their suffering, death, and exile. The Tennessee Valley Authority, a federally owned utility, built the Teleco Dam in 1979 after four decades of planning. Teleco Dam flooded the locations of the 18th century overhill Cherokee towns of Chota, Tennessee, Toqua, Tomatli, Sitico, Mialoquo, and Tuskegee, as well as several prehistoric sites dating to as early as the Archaic period. I ask you to remember their destruction. The Teleco Dam increases the downstream hydroelectric power plant's output by a mere 23 megawatts, less than one-tenth of a percent of the TVA's total power. Fort Loudoun, which you could see on the first map, was excavated from the Teleco Dam's future reservoir. Dirt was deposited to raise the site 17 feet, and the fort was rebuilt in its original location. The overhill Cherokee towns, on the other hand, were memorialized with brutalist reservoir-side monuments, such as this one for Chota, and this one for Tanasi. Over 1,000 Native American bodies were disinterred prior to the flooding. While white and African-American cemeteries were relocated to dry locations, these remains were held by the TVA in university collections. As of this decade, repatriation to the Cherokee was still ongoing. British colonial and United States agreements with, Cher with the Cherokee acknowledged their right to a diminishing portion of territory. Some of these boundaries overlapped with the recognized rights of other Native American peoples. Only a tiny remnant of this territory remains in Cherokee hands. The Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians purchased that fragment of their lands in Western North Carolina. Known as the Kuala Boundary, it comprises nearly 83 square miles and is home to 8,092 people. The 800 Cherokees who remained or returned despite the Indian removal policy have over 16,000 descendants. Shawnees were forced west in several waves, with the majority of them sent to Missouri. Further removal sent them to a Kansas reservation and to the Indian Territory as the Eastern Shawnee tribe. In 1854, the U.S. government reduced the Kansas reservation to 160,000 acres. 
This plus the brutal abuses perpetrated against them during and after the Civil War by white settlers, even though they had fought with the United States government during the Civil War, forced the Kansas Shawnees to relocate to Cherokee Nation in northeastern Oklahoma. The federal government caused the former Kansas, Cherokee, former Kansas Shawnees and the Cherokees to enter into a formal agreement in 1869, whereby the Shawnees received allotments and citizenship in the Cherokee Nation. However, the Shawnees maintained separate communities and separate cultural identities. In 2000, following decades of organizing, they were recognized by the federal government as the Shawnee tribe, a sovereign indigenous nation. Some 600 Yuchi people live in Oklahoma, largely as citizens of the multi-ethnic Muscogee Creek Nation. Among them are elder speakers of the Yuchi language, Maxine Wildcat Barnett, Bada Tiger Nichwander, and Martha Wildcat Squire, who are engaged in an intergenerational language teaching project to introduce a new generation to their native language. The Cherokee, Yuchi, and Shawnee peoples on whose territory Vanderbilt University sits are a part of contemporary America. While Vanderbilt and Tennessee owe a historical debt to the indigenous peoples of this land, one that is bound up in dispossession and removal, this acknowledgement is not meant to confine Native Americans to distant reservation lands or to consign them to history. North America's indigenous peoples live throughout the continent. Two thirds of Native Americans and Alaska Natives live in urban areas. A major share of immigrants to the United States are indigenous peoples from Mexico and Central America. All of them live in the 21st century and their rights and their survival are part of our future.